So today, um, Igor and uh, Simon are going to be reporting on the Flourishing Business World Camps and Next Generation Online Collaboration Platforms. But before we get started, let's consider our privilege. In Canada, it's customary for us to start events like this with an acknowledgement that compared to Indigenous populations, we are all newcomers here, whether our families have lived here for months or for a century. This is part of our truth and reconciliation process for our First Nations, the Indigenous people of Canada. And in this spirit, we acknowledge for all of us that this is sacred land on which all of us are privileged to be. This land, the nearby lakes and sea, has supported human beings for thousands of years and is rich in history, knowledge, and tradition. We're privileged to be beneficiaries and the stewards of all that has come before on behalf of the seven generations to come and beyond. We invite you to consider your relationship to the land and how you benefit from being here while the original caretakers may not. Take a moment to reflect on, research, and understand, honor, and respect the peoples indigenous to the lands where you live, work, and play. Today, each place around the world is increasingly home to peoples from across the world, and we are each grateful to have the opportunity to be wherever we are today and wherever you are today. I'm personally in Calgary, which is the traditional territories of the Natsitsitapi and the people of Treaty 7 region, including Siksika, the Pekani, the Blood Tried Kainai, the Tutsina, and the Stony Dakota First Nations. And the city of Calgary is also home to the Métis Nation of Alberta Region 3. And our watershed is the Bull River Basin. Do you know which watershed you're in? And I, we ask that um, because the biophysical environments vary from scale from microscopic to global in extent, we can't help but be connected and interconnected to our place. We are dependent on factors of nature that have an influence on our survival, development, and evolution. As such, we depend on water at a cellular level. We depend on it for our livelihoods, healthy ecosystems, healthy people, and a robust economy. Just think about where your sewer in your building is connected to. I'm sure you have visited the washroom before this meeting, or maybe you will after. Maybe you're drinking a glass of water right now. So consider the ecosystem, the service that is provided by the watershed that you're in. For those of you who are exploring better business models, including our tools, the Flourishing Business Model Canvas, that you're enabled to explore how um, enterprise interrelates and is interdependent with social and biophysical context. We are a community of innovation, practice, and research, and our focus is on the design of enterprises that we are what we call fit for the future. We consider enterprises fit for the future if they follow and accomplish a normative purpose, which we call flourishing. There are a lot of possibilities for you to activate within the network, no matter if your focus is on education, research, employment, or many other things. This is a network that you can quickly enter, quite quickly. It's fun. Many people are open for collaboration and cooperation. There's a lot of knowledge and competencies and skills and patience and fun in this group. So hopefully you're in the right place and ready to engage in a global network of possibilities, the flourishing enterprise movement. And this is a pretty close representation to where everybody is related to geography. I just realized that my heat map has made all other countries red and Canada green and United States yellow. I think I will fix that because I don't want to put any connotations in place. But you can see we're fairly global, really global. Oh, I should also mention that we are a tribe of 2,198, which is 38 more than last year. We're, we're starting to grow exponentially. Here are the places we are located on social media. As some of you can see, our hashtags are there, strongly sustainable, flourishing business, business model innovation, sustainability as flourishing. And we hope that we can use those as often as possible when you're relating the work that you do to the work that we do, that we all do. We would like to think that we're contributing to a growing and worldwide movement of flourishing enterprises. The goal is to create impact at scale quickly, to create a world where enterprises excel because humans uh, flourish and nature thrives. So all of this is based on transdisciplinary science and systems-based science, ind indigenous knowledge and ethical and moral frameworks. We consider ourselves to not only be in sync with the UN goals, but even going beyond them. The Flourishing Enterprise Movement is a tribe of all these initiatives that self-identify as strongly sustainable flourishing enterprises, whether or not they have anything to do with the Strong Sustainable Business Model Group. They all support a future where businesses excel because people are flourishing and nature is thriving. I'm stressing that. So these are the initiatives that the members of our group have formed in order to do good to do well. So what that means is that these members here can come together, all of you who are on this meeting, if you have an initiative, we encourage you to uh, find ways to participate and motivate other members to join you on your quest to do so. 
And uh, I invite you to look at the wiki uh, if you're interested in, in these specific initiatives that are recorded on our wiki that shows the initiatives of the group. We're also a collaborating hub for strong, strong sustainability in the sense of scientific publications, book publications, conferences. Um, there's three international conferences this year in September, which uh, you'll be hearing about more over the, uh, as the dates go a bit closer. But if anyone ever has updated uh, conferences that they want to make sure that everybody in the group is aware of, just let us know and we'll um, add them to our calendar and to the slide presentation. Now, before the main attraction, there's two more introductions I need to make. These are the community animators. So Lori Farley, that's me. Uh, Tim Pasolt is just beginning to transition out and uh, we have a new uh, uh, community animator joining us. That's Amy. She is actually on the call today. You can see her picture. Wave, Amy. Hello. Uh, and we're also hopefully in the process of onboarding two more community anim animators. So we're trying to create a little tribe of people that can help um, activate the community, connect the community, and introduce um, people to each other so we can have more meaningful relationships. Welcome, Amy. And second, uh, I just want to introduce uh, uh, um, Desiree. I think she is also on the call. Uh, she's going to be presenting at our next monthly meeting, which is May 11th. That'll be our 98th monthly meeting. Uh, and uh, she's going to be presenting on business models from linear to circular to regenerative. Our following meeting in June will be presented by C.D. Harquill. I don't know the title off the top of my head just yet. And our 100th meeting will be July 13th, where some of our key and historical team members will, will be doing a little bit of a retrospective on sort of where we've been. And then our 101 meeting, which will be in uh, October, will be a little bit more about the future and, and how we'll be coming together in the future. Uh, this is the meeting that we're going to be talking about today. So Simon uh, Robinson and Igor Kuto will be presenting the Flourishing Business Canvas and Next Generation Online Collaboration Platforms. In this meeting, they're going to be demonstrating how future deep tech capabilities within the platform will create new opportunities for conscious leaders, change makers, specialists to impact on organizations and businesses at the strategic level, facilitating both culture and digital transformations. Take it away, Simon. Yeah, thank you very much for that introduction. It's a wonderful introduction, um, especially in terms of showing all the different activities, ongoing activities, such as the innovation streams, and also the new activities, such as the community animators. And also, um, it's wonderful timing doing this presentation because this week, the um, group has just announced the startup team looking at how to really evolve the, um, the Flourishing Enterprise Innovation Toolkit. So that's the, there's some fantastic um, timings here. Really what we wanted to do is over the last um, maybe six months, year, I've tried to make some contributions to all our meetings, but I haven't really been able to fully explain exactly how Holonomics has been working with the Flourishing Canvas. And the reason is that behind the scenes, we've been working in partnership with First Tee. Um, Igor's going to introduce the company in a minute because we've really tried to explore what does the Flourishing Business Canvas mean from a deep tech perspective? What does it mean to develop flourishing business models from a deep tech ecosystem perspective? And how can we really ensure that the advanced technology that is being developed, how can we make it inclusive? How can we ensure that people who may traditionally not have access to advanced technology and deep technology, how can we really um, ensure they have access? So what we're going to be doing today is, in terms of this presentation, this is going to be the very first look at the technology that our ecosystem has been developing. And we're going to show not only the technology, but also we're going to be showing how Holonomics has been using the technology in practical, you know, in a practical working way with clients. And hopefully then what we really want to do is open up the conversation to really then look at, well, how could we maybe work together in partnership, looking at how we can integrate these two particular streams and um, initiatives. So just before we begin, it's very much a conversation. We very much welcome, we very much welcome comments along the way and hope that this will be a conversation rather than a presentation. 
So in terms of how we want to structure this, we'll do a short introduction. And then before we present the technology, we wanted to provide quite a lot of context in order for you to really understand how we're working with the canvas. We can't really explain how we're working with the canvas without providing this perspective. So we're going to give you a perspective on how we are designing deep tech ecosystems. So we've got a slightly different approach to maybe other deep tech ecosystems. And we're going to be putting the flourishing, talking about the canvas in the context of deep tech. We'll then um, actually give you a working example. We're not just going to present slides. We're actually going to show the technology working um, as a real example. And then of course, um, what I think is this presentation will generate quite a lot of observations and questions. So we want to make sure there's enough time to really you know, bring in the team together and look at um, how we could potentially uh, take our innovations forward together. So just very briefly, I'm Simon Robinson. I'm the CEO worldwide of Holonomics. Holonomics is a Brazilian based business consultancy and we facilitate digital and cultural transformation in organizations. And for a number of years now, we've been working with First Tea. So Igor, would you like to just do say a very, very brief hello and introduction? Yeah. Hi everyone, thank you to be here. I'm a co-founder of First T and I have more than 20 years as a technologist. And for me, it's very special to be here discussing and understanding how can we direct the technology to create positive impact on life and to our living ecosystems. So I hope you all like and share with us some understandings. Thank you. I'm I'm thanks, Igor. I'm really pleased that Igor's here because Igor has a huge amount of experience and knowledge, especially in terms of complex and deep tech platform architectures. So this is a great opportunity for those of you who are here to, you know, really not just ask questions of me, but also um, ask questions of Igor. Maybe you've got doubts or things you need clarifying. It's a great opportunity to really learn more about deep tech. And we'll be going into deep tech with Igor. He's going to, Igor's gonna be really going into quite an interesting level for you to understand how you connect the flourishing canvas with deep tech technologies. Holonomics hasn't just been working with First T and our ecosystem. Um, I know many of you will know that both Maria um, and myself have already written two books, Holonomics, Business Where People and Planet Matter and Customer Experiences with Soul and you in Design. We've already done two um, presentations to this group on these books, but also we're now collaborating with Igor, writing our third book, which is going to be published this summer, Deep Tech and the Amplified Organization. Uh, this isn't the actual final cover. We're still just finalizing the book's covers and artwork. But I'm really excited because in this presentation, we'll actually be sharing a lot of insights that we're, be, that we're going to be writing about and sharing in our book. So why write about deep tech? Well, over the last, especially over the last couple of years, we have really accelerated into the digital economy. And I like this quote from Deloitte, the digital economy is undermining conventional notions about how businesses are structured how firms interact and how consumers obtain services, information and goods. And it's been particularly notable that um, the actual pandemic, many of us have had a lot of challenges over this last year, businesses and organizations as well. But especially for maybe those of us who work with consultancy, it's become very apparent that organizations have totally changed their appreciation of what online collaboration means. And many businesses, for example, are not returning to the old reality of, for example, having head offices. We're going to see many more ways, organizational ways in which people work together. And we're gonna see much more online collaboration. So this fundamentally transforms how, for example, flourishing consultants work and help organizations transform. But of course, especially for businesses like Holonomics, First T, our question is, how can we start a flourishing conversation with senior executives? We've seen this change of appreciation of advanced technology, but what about flourishing business models? 
And the way we do that, with the way we start the conversations is through the framework of the new four P's of deep tech. This is a framework that Holonomics introduced in 2015. We write about it in customer experiences with Sol. And previously, our own, our own um, consultancy, we were really focused on purpose, planet and people. But then of course, we started to get to know Igor, we started to get, the, uh, get to know First GE, and we realized that we really need to help businesses develop an appreciation of all four of these perspectives. And so over the last few years, together, we've been developing this um, approach based on the new four P's of deep tech. And so in this talk, we're going to be um, sharing a lot more about what exactly does that mean? These are not just four categories or four instances. But what we've found is that by starting the conversation with senior executives saying they need to transform and they need to think about the new four P's, executives understand that. It's a very interesting way of triggering a conversation that really grabs their attention. So this is the first insight. This is how we're framing flourishing conversations at senior levels in large organizations. And also together through our approach, we're redefining deep tech. The, we first see the term deep tech in 2014, and it really was a way of categorizing uh, startups. Other, we've seen other definitions of deep tech that use the phrase deep tech to categorize types of technology. But after we started our conversations together in our ecosystem, we found, we found these definitions just a little bit superficial. We wanted to develop, a, ironically, a, a deeper definition of deep tech. And so this is what we've been developing jointly. The way we did this was in 2018, Holonomics and First T came together to start um, a series of talks with senior executives called the Deep Tech Talks. And we wanted to explore the many different dimensions of deep tech. And of course, with the pandemic last year, we weren't able to meet physically. So we started a podca podcast, a deep tech podcast, again, inviting executives and deep thinkers to really explore the many different dimensions of deep tech. And together, during these talks, it became really apparent that it wasn't just a case of working together on projects. We could only truly deliver deep tech um, deep tech solutions through multidisciplinary ecosystems. And I'm really pleased that many different people, many different members of our deep tech ecosystem are here listening today because together we've brought together artists and programmers, philosophers, and people from many different uh, social backgrounds. We have a lot of diversity in our ecosystem. And that is really um, totally transforming how we perceive problems, how we frame problems, and the manner in which we can investigate problems and provide solutions. I'll talk a little bit more about this in a second. So that's our story about how Holonomics came together with First Tee. Igor, I'd just like to invite you just to um, talk a little bit about more, a little bit more about who First Tee are and um, how you've been developing over the last couple of years. Because First yeah, are an extremely interesting technology company. Yeah, thank you, Simon. First Tee started some 10 years ago with the basic question that what is technology? What is it, its purpose? And what is the direction that should move the technology evolution? So we have a very special background on mission critical systems like aviation, digital commerce, and also oil and energy here in Brazil with large companies, then we started to look in how can we deepen the technology evolution to the, to the so positive social impact. So nowadays we work with healthcare, education, and social impact industry mainly with some, some deep challenges like education here in Brazil. We, we have a customer with more than 3 million students, and how can we design, develop, and deploy technologies that really can bring an evolution to the learning aspects of, of children and to young people. 
And also we are very involved in the pandemic. We, we also work with hospitals and researchers in the area in how can we use the, the advanced technologies like machine learning, natural language processing, natural language understanding to really help doctors to understand the diseases and symptoms of people. So first he is very interested in how can we, we put technology to really serve communities and people. And we do that by creating what we call digital backbones that is inspiring our, our human body to create this digital uh, operational model on companies where we not only look at data or processes, we look like really uh, a dynamic behavior of organizations and how digital can, can transform organizations to be more fast or or, or responsive or to take care of, of privacy and ethical conditions. We are also involved in, in the design of platforms for especially for social impact, education and healthcare, and also we understand those advanced and technologies and put them on, on the right track. Thanks. And also, um, Felicity have also founded another, um, a certain other movements and not-for-profit um, organizations. So, Igor, could you mention Vina Web as, as yeah. a first tea initiative movement? Yeah. It, it, this search for technology evolution on the, the right track brings us to, to some conditions here in Brazil when we have some economic exclusion territories. We, we have some clusters of poverty and, and armed conflicts. And, and we understood that advanced technologies should be tougher than those, those communities. So we really dream in, in some form of technology uh, teaching in those territories and, and how can technology help the economic development, but also to, to to came together the community to advance on the deep, deepest problems. So we are very honored, honored past year that Vina Web gets recognized as one of the top five impact initiatives on the world to gender equality and to, to some questions around inequality in technology. And we, we created what we call social impact as a service. We have a school that teaches advanced technology inside Brazilian slums, favelas, that are those territories of sometimes armed conflict or economic exclusion. And when the youth are prepared to the market, Vina Web developed software solutions to large companies. And when a large companies hire a Vina Web technological solutions, all of the profit is invested on the community evolution. So we, we are very happy to, to now have on the ecosystem Vinyl Web and some of people from Vinyl Web are here and they are helping us to understand some other perspectives on the problems that we face on technology development and social development. That's excellent. So hopefully you'll now see that one way of talking about our ecosystem is through the constituent organizations, First T, Holonomics, Vina Web, and also proceeds to say a part of First Tea as well. And also we have this part, which is Deep Tech Ventures. And what we're going to be doing is introducing one of these particular ventures, which is strategy. But this would be quite a traditional way of looking at an ecosystem through in terms of the partners. But we've actually created a systemic understanding of our ecosystem, so we prefer to talk about the systemic qualities of the ecosystem that we've been developing. So it's not just about the actual technology, it's about the impact that we're achieving. And you can only really achieve this deep impact through a combination of deep thinking, a deeper way of thinking about technology, a philosophical, a living systems way of thinking about the technology, deep talent, it's very, we're very much, um, integrating vinyl web and really developing deep tech solutions with people who come from non-traditional technology or educational backgrounds. And also we're looking at new models of deep collaboration. So strategy is one example of deep collaboration and it's this part that we're going to focus on for the rest of this presentation. Again, um, I want to stop there. If, does anyone have any comments? I know we're 
um, speeding along because we've got a lot to show and talk about. But does anyone have any comments at this point? No, I'll move on. So following on from the design of the ecosystem, we really realized that we need to um, articulate our philosophy in a manifesto. And this manifesto drives everything we do from every intervention and every innovation development and every technological development that we create. So the purpose of deep tech is to use deep thinking to find deep solutions to complex problems. That is the point of deep tech, not creating advanced technology for the sake of advanced technology. And we combine analytical thinking and artistic consciousness. And today we've got uh, two or three of our artists, designers and very creative people here on, on this um, call. You know, and they're working very much together with our technologists, program, programmers and software architects. And so in terms of our um, objectives, deep tech creates augmented intelligence, which is the combination of artificial intelligence with conscious human endeavors. We're very much working with artificial intelligence. We'll show you some of that, but it's very much about combining the best of artificial intelligence with an expansion of human consciousness. Also privacy and ethics are core elements of deep tech algorithms without this, um, focus on privacy and ethics, you don't have a deep tech, uh, you don't have a deep tech solution. And Facebook have really struggled, for example, on this part with privacy and ethics, I feel. Deep tech is developed by talented people who come from a rich diversity of backgrounds. We really focus on inclusion and diversity in our projects. And the values of deep tech are the five universal human values of peace, truth, love, righteousness, and nonviolence. And again, Maria has really been championing the introduction of universal human values, both in a corporate context and also in a technological context. And again, it's been incredible really working with these human values in deep tech and sharing them in a corporate context with many of our clients and partners. And then finally, deep tech helps us to explore our world and ourselves in ever more meaningful ways, honoring what it is to be human in our world. And we're really going to focus on this concept of working in meaningful ways because we're going to be talking in a second about the ontology that is behind the flourishing business canvas and how that can dialogue and work together with the kind of technological and organizational ontologies that we've been working with in our ecosystem. So what does this really mean in practice? Um, I know obviously inside of, of the um, Flourishing Enterprise Innovation Group, there are of course streams looking at, well, what does agility mean in a flourishing canvas? So in a, in a flourishing context. And we too are developing a number of different uh, frameworks and methodologies that we'll be talking about a lot in our, in our deep tech book. But just by way of br a brief introduction, we actually work together using these three movements of deep tech. So what does it really mean to introduce deep tech into a complex um, platform project? Well, the first thing we have to do is we elevate the value proposition. And again, the flourishing canvas is excellent for really having conversations about looking at where the prop what is the current value proposition of an organization? and how and where it needs to be elevated. Then we need to look at how an organization achieves scale through its activities. And again, it's not just through platforms. Igor mentioned a little bit that First Tree are absolute specialists in helping organizations achieve scale, not just through platforms, but through what's uh, behind a platform, which is the backbones, the analytics and the services needed to really help organizations achieve scale. And then we really help amplify the purpose of the organization through new forms of innovation. And the way we do this is through certain frameworks and methodologies such as technology with soul, augmented agility and networked intelligence. Igor in a minute is going to talk about networked intelligence. He mentioned briefly one example, which is First TE have been working with um, hospitals, especially through the COVID crisis, 
here's just one example that Firsty developed. Uh, Firsty developed an app uh, for one of the most important hospitals in South America, Hospital City of Libanese. They developed this app to help um, the hospital ensure that every single one of its members um, had a COVID vaccine because obviously hospital workers are on the front line. They're some of the first people to receive the vaccine. Uh, First Tree helped develop this application within the space of a single week. And that is a huge, huge achievement to actually work in this way using our augmented agility process. And I just wanted to share this feedback from Diego. Diego's uh, one of the um, agility managers in the hospital. And at the very end, you know, he, he praised First Tree and the team for their achievement. And at the end he says, it really was a week full of technology with soul and augmented agility. So I just wanted to share this to show that everything we're talking about, we're actually already using these, um, not just technologies and platforms, but also ways of working with our clients to really achieve deep impact. So now what we actually want to do, I want to shift the conversation onto looking at, well, how have we been, how have we as an ecosystem been working with the Flourishing Canvas. So hopefully we've been, we've provided a little bit of context to really understand, well, who's been, who's behind these initiatives? Because without really understanding the who and what motivates us, it'll be a little bit more difficult to really explain, well, what, what are we actually doing and how have we been implementing it? So one of the first central insights, um, in a second, Igor is going to be introducing the strategy platform. But I just want to share this um, opening thought in that uh, last year, three, uh, obviously there are many, many companies producing post-it notes and sticky notes, but last year alone, 3M produced 50 billion post-it notes. And if you think about all the meetings, all the workshops, all the you know, design thinking workshops um, that have happened using post-it notes, a lot of the time they get thrown away and maybe some of the information on them is truly, truly captured. But what happens when we actually, we, could, we lose so much richness when we throw these post-it notes away. So really strategy started with this central insight in that it wanted to redefine the notion of the post-it note. And here, obviously, there's a very clear link with the flourishing business canvas. So on strategy, the central idea is that every single item that you locate on a wall or a canvas or a template or a chart, it becomes active and analyzable, analyzable. So everything now becomes active and that is a complete game changer when it comes to online collaboration. So I'd like to um, change, sorry, I'd like to transfer the conversation over to Igor. And Igor, I'd just like you to introduce strategy a little bit more in terms of a platform, but also what is the deep tech that is underlying the platform and how is it now going to change online collaboration? And after Igor's explained the platform thinking a little bit, I'll come back and show how Holonomics, a business consultancy, is actually using our content and our frameworks inside of strategy, including the flourishing canvas. Nice, fantastic, Simon, thank you. And um, strategy started with the question in how our work practices and way of working and also our business contexts, but a more, more wide view of, uh, of the business, including social perspectives, environmental perspectives, ethical perspectives, should drive the work practices. So we are not happy with current tools that look at the canvases or the, the, the design tools as a mechanical practice or just look at the tools development as a financial venture. It's a, a, a development driven by the market. And this is very materialized to us when we look at traditional uh, tools business models especially to countries like Brazil when we look at the, the subscription rate uh, at the, the cost of subscription 
those tools are really not going into the communities that really need to use visual modeling and deep analytics to solve their problems. So strategy started with this, this mission to enable thinking and the most advanced analytical tools on language and design and to give them for free. So we are developing a business module, a content and network based, based business module where communities can use strategy features, including video conferencing, including visual modeling for free with no limitations. Then we can fund the evolution of strategy with organizations or, or teams or groups that can afford to pay for some premium content or more advanced features. But we really don't want to give limitations on the basic version of strategy. So in one, in one perspective, the strategy was born with the mission to promote and help themes to use digital tools to, to help a more deep understanding of their problems using visual modeling and canvases and journeys and everything that we, we researched all on other tools and our work at First T that really links strategy, innovation and technology design and development, but also to bring some advanced analytical features on the language, not only on the ontologies, on the philosophical or systemic ontologies, but also with computational ontologies. I will show an example of one use case of a strategy, analyzing a text network of COVID, and, and I, I will show the power of the engine that is inside the strategy. So one key differentiation differentiation uh, besides the business model and the analytical features is, is that we have a link between the work practice and the ontology that are behind that I, I will show in a minute. Yeah. And again, um, just, just to emphasize, strategy is available now for everyone um, listening to check out and try out. It's just at the very end of the beta phase. So for example, there are some help pages to be added, but you'll be able to try all of this out now. And we're already launching, not just with content from Holonomics, also with content from Matt Watkinson, for example, who's authored a number of books, um, The 10 Principles of Great Customer Experiences and The Grid. Oh, okay, so uh, we can summarize the question of the, the technological side of strategy in how can we we absorb all the thinking and knowledge that was modeled using the post-it and to include the, the, the computer and the machine learning to help us to think in our problem. There is a funny quote here at First Aid that daily in the world has problems and challenges that are increasing at an exponential complexity rate, but our human brains continues on the same size. So how can we include the computer and the machines to help us to really think about, about our challenges. Then this brings us to, to strategy evolution, to strategy platform and to the ontology backbone. So first we organize the work in workspaces and use the digital walls to, to model our, our thinking. And we include real time collaborations like video. And now we really have opportunity to use natural language processing to, to real time transcri transcribe what we are talking and then analyze these at some more newer algorithm algorithms that I will show you later. So the starting point is some base of reference like traditional tools like Miro or, or Muro in the organizing visually our, our thinking. But if we can real time processes all the stickers, the post-it notes, and in the context of the Canvas ontology and the work journey, the agile work journey ontology, we can build what we, we call a knowledge graph. This is a, a, actually a real image of a knowledge graph that I will, will highlight some features in strategy. And we, we can expand and structure this knowledge graph according to some ontology that is tied that is designed with the Canvas ontology and the Agile journey ontology. And strategy has this workflow on, on its backbone. So we get each sticker, the sentences from each sticker, 
then break up word by word and relate with other words and other speakers and build what we call a text network with some layers. We can have a layer of similarity of words. We can have a layer of centrality of words and sentences. We can have a layer of communities of, of, of themes and, and thinking. So in this first stage, strategy is really a platform that can break up all of the words and sentences that are being modeled and build a text network analyzed by natural language processing. But the text network is, is, is very subject to error or, or mis misinterpretations if we don't evolve the text network in the direction of the canvas ontology, because each canvas has a point of view or a certain way to, to direct the thinking. So strategy also understand each block on the canvas when you are moving the sticker. It's not a template or a, a image behind the, the web browser. Strategy really understand each block and associate the sentences and the words to each block. And the block has some metadata and some inference and link rules to the ontology. So when you are look at a value uh, value equal destruction or you are looking at some kind of governance and you put a sticker on a governance block, you create an association between the sentence of the sticker, the block of the canvas, the metadata of this block, the canvas itself, the wall that is inserted, and also the way through. So this is the second layer of strategy is, is to build uh, upon a canvas ontology, but we really have the experience that every canvas is is put or it is designed in some journey of thinking. So we also process the, the sticker and the canvas relation between a journey relation. Simon will, will show some example of journey like in the grid or, or, or agile strategy journey. So we also put all those sentences that are already in context of the block and the canvas in the context, in the context of this, the system of thinking or the design system of thinking that this canvas is inserted. So we have the journey metadata and we are working, uh, this is the start of the journey of a strategy intelligence backbone. We are all working on the specific machine learning modules to specific journeys. It's not a general purpose machine learning for language. It is on the first stage, but we transform this general purpose machine learning language into a specific machine learning module for those journeys and canvases. And we also use those models with what we call transformers that are advanced, very advanced technologies in, in the area of language that not only can translate text, but summarize text text or to transform text to another context. So we try to have this, this, those modules of machine learning. And with these progressions, we can build what, what we have seen on the previous slides, what we call the knowledge graph, that is the work ontology of the organization. So this is the, the progression of con concepts in strategy. It has a big data storage capacity and we are, we are in the start of this journey of technological developing, development of this next generation, but we are already experimenting some key deep analytical features when we look at this text network in the prisma of ontologies. So this is a real use case of the text network using COVID themes, it is in Portuguese, but I can highlight some of these, those elements. The first is what we call link relevance, because when we build a text network, you, we can use some graph mathematical analysis to understand the key associations between the terms, and we can put some, some weight on, on those associations. So if you, if you look at, 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 this, at, at this, Simon, please, I'm sorry. How can I say recorte in English? It's not perspective, is it? It's yeah. The, this first element here on the link relevance and the centrality. Uh, where is it? I can't. I'm not seeing it. 
can you zoom a little bit on this first part on the yeah, relevance? I think, of, I've, I've got I've got the slides on my laptop, Igor. Maybe well, okay. continuing here. So in this specific case, there's a uh, some key firms in the analysis about COVID talking about the president here in Brazil, talking about the situation, talking about politics, counting talking about the public policy and talking about some, let me see, uh, some votes in, inside Brazilian. So we can look at the enterprise graph, looking for relevance of the links between the terms and sentences, and also looking at centrality measurements around the organization themes. So these are the, the some of the first features that we are experiencing. Another very interesting layer of deep analytics of, of thinking is the similarity layer. So here we are seeing that financial is very related to investment. And we are seeing some similarity between epidemiologic and immunology. We are seeing so, so many similarities between how to really reduce or, or, or to control the, the pandemic really here in Brazil. So automatically, when you put those concepts and those modelings on a strategy, we can see a similarity layer between concepts. Another layer of a deep analysis is what we call communities. This, this print is showing that there is a strong relation between some words like COVID, and COVID is already categorized as a disease in this enterprise graph. This is because they, they have another color. And later means the, the beds on the ICU unit of the hospital. So we are seeing here a strong link relevance between ICU, UTI in Portuguese means ICU, intensive care units, and the beds and the COVID and the immunization. So the deep analytics discover and propose to, to the humans this by itself. To, to show on the graphs using the mathematical analysis on the network. Another yeah. layer and that I, we... I'm sorry, oh, I was, sorry, sorry. E, sorry, Igor, just to explain to people, really to understand what's happening here, this is actually, these are, these are, this is all real data. Uh, first, he already have a lot of expertise in knowledge graph and computational ontologies. And so one of the key points is that what is the exact relevance to say the flourishing canvas we can now do some very, very, very powerful analytical thinking, not only when you just work with, say, the flourishing canvas on its own, but when you have a, a project that links the flourishing canvas with other forms of canvas and template, and then you do some deep analytical work, it creates an incredibly powerful um, way to gener generate insights for clients. And thank you, Igor. I think this is a very good yeah. um, example of just what type of analytical analysis you're so, actually able to do at the ontological level. So just thank to, uh, yes, thank you. Sorry, I was trying to raise my hand, but I can't figure out how to do it. Um, the um, uh, So just as an example, I mean, one of the tools that we commonly use with the canvas would be um, the Golden Circle by Simon Sinek. Um, and so there's, there's an obvious uh, conceptual relationship between the why on the golden circle and the goals box on the flourishing business canvas. So you, what you're suggesting is that, so if, if I've got a golden circle already prepared, what would this tool do in terms of suggesting goals? In, in, in the, the next evolution cycles, we will looking for a suggestion between the terms but in this first version, we can analyze the golden circle and analyze the, the flourishy business canvas and to show the link and the relevance of, on the links and the communities okay. around the, the words. Yeah. Okay. But we and are not the at other... the stage to make suggestions right now because we need to evolve at ontologies a, li a little bit more, especially yeah. uh, on the journey ontologies that, are, that mixes the golden circle with the flourishing canvas. We need to evolve a little bit more in the ontologies. Yeah. Yeah. We'll actually show you an actual journey using the flourishing canvas to help okay. explain a little bit more. We've got a, a working example. Thank you. Yeah. 
So Eagles um, introduced a little bit about what exactly is behind the platform. So hopefully now you're understanding that strategy is quite a bit different to say the current generation of collaboration platforms such as Miro, Miro, which are very much based on visual engines, helping people collaborate in a visual manner. What I'm actually going to be, what we're going to be doing now is actually showing you an implementation of the flourishing canvas inside of strategy. But I just wanted this um, statement here that we have not made the flourishing canvas available to everyone. And the reason is that Holonomics has a commercial license to use the canvas. And this means we don't make the canvas available to everyone. Holonomics can only use implementations of the canvas when either Maria and myself are facilitating um, workshops or working directly with the canvas. So this is just one particular thing. I am going to show you the canvas, but I'm only going to be showing you my part, or sorry, the holonomics part of strategy. You won't be seeing the canvas as it is available to everyone. Obviously, we can make the canvas available to everyone, but it hasn't. It's only been made available inside of the holonomics part of strategy. And also another part of the license is that we're not allowed to make any, and that this is absolutely fine, but we're not allowed to make any changes to the canvas. I just wanted to make mention here Nicole's work. Um, Nicole and her colleagues um, a few months ago did a present, really excellent presentation on her investigations of um, how can you actually improve the look and feel in the design of the flourishing canvas. And I absolutely love all of the um, developments that Nicole was talking about using hexagons, rethinking it. We haven't used any of this work, but again, part of the conversation is, you know, we would love to talk about how we can combine the best of this thinking with, you know, some of our design expertise and putting this kind of version of the canvas into strategy. We haven't because we're very, very focused on making sure that we fully meet all the requirements of our license. Does that, make, hopefully that makes sense. So I'm just going to stop here. And we talked about journeys, we talked about ontologies, we talked about um, the content as well. So what I would like to do is actually show you strategy. So you guys are now seeing that this is now, we're now in the strategy homepage. And I need, to, to apologies, I'm actually going to be looking at my laptop because, you know, to help with the presentation, I'm on two different laptops. So what I'm now going to do is I have now entered the platform and this is the Holonomics, um, our company perspective on strategy. So the first thing you see is that we have access to what we call a number of different organizations. Holonomics has its own section inside strategy. But then also we have access to the ecosystem of deep tech. You can share access as well. So for example, all of our companies inside of our deep tech ecosystem, we obviously collaborate together. Um, there's an area here that I've actually called general video calls. So when I want to have a meeting with someone, uh, a short meeting, I can just go into strategy, have a video call, and we just have a, um, a blank work area to, you know, exchange ideas, um, put up some post-it notes. So that's the area where we have video calls. And also here you can see that um, Holonomics has run a marketing workshop with an external client. That again is a private space, so we can give clients, as you'd imagine, access to specific areas of strategy when we're running our projects. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to enter here into the Holonomics part of strategy. And so the next level down from the organization, we can create various workspaces. So Igor mentioned the fact that we have journeys, collections of content, templates, and um, canvases. So here we've got two, we've got the grid, which is content from Matt Watkinson. We actually took a single canvas from Matt Watkinson and we expanded it out. So Maria and myself together with the design team from Strategy, we took a look at what does that single canvas mean 
in strategy. And in fact, online, we actually needed three more canvases to really help people benefit from the maximum use of his canvas. Here we have the Flourishing Business Canvas. Here we have the Three Horizons, which um, Holonomics has been using a lot. Many of you might know the Three Horizons Canvas from the International Futures Forum designed by Bill Sharp. And here we have a Holonomics um, journey. So again, in terms of the business model, the Holonomics journey is premium content designed by Holonomics and implemented inside of strategy. So I'm just going to access here. And as you can see, we've worked really hard to create meaningful journey, journeys into connecting different canvases um, in a way that we can that we can help our clients. So, for example, with a with this particular journey, we start with the three horizons, and again, I'll, I'll just expand that a little bit. I'm being a little bit slow because I'm, as I say, I'm working on two different workspaces. Again, a lot of um, Holonomics content is obviously naturally in Portuguese because um, the majority of our clients are here in Brazil. So we can start with the three horizons. We can move to the flourishing business canvas. And again, we've kept the canvas exactly as it is and also with the license agreement there. After working with that, we then um, can help people develop this strategic map. And again, in previous calls, I've talked about the way in which Holonomics works with um, the balanced scorecard methodology. And in this instance, we go from the canvas to a strategic map. And then here we've got um, a whiteboard where people can put post-it notes that may not have found a place yet. And then we help develop an organization with its um, OKRs, its objectives and key results. So this together is an example of a facilitated journey. But again, there's an opportunity here to go from a journey to um, really looking at how you can package the, flourish, the, sorry, the flourishing enterprise innovation toolkit. So for example, you can ask the question, what does it, how would we create this inside Stridetree? What kind of videos, what kind of extra um, educational information do we need to add? And we've got all of, we've got the ability to look at adding much more content around these particular workspaces. Because again, this is, an, this is a journey that would be facilitated by Maria and myself. It's not a standalone piece of content that we would expect people to utilize just working on their own. Simon, can you add a sticker and drag through the canvas just to show the hit detection and the link between the typings and the block? Yeah, just in terms of time, what I wanted to do is I'm now going to show um, the actual flourishing canvas on its own, just so we can, uh, sh sorry, hang on, where is it here? Yeah, so I'm just going to show what it's like to add a sticker. And again, we've got this in, obviously in Portuguese, it's a slightly different perspective in order to fill the screen, but this is an active canvas now. So in, for example, Mirror Mural, they have active areas in order to help people select and print out and share the canvas. But what we have is active areas that are very much connected to uh, the knowledge graph. So I'm gonna leave, put a post-it note here what's a key objective of our um, ecosystem? Generating social impact. So I can create a note here, and as you can see, the, the platform has this knowledge graph engine behind it, so every area becomes highly, highly active. But again, one of the things that we would love to, you know, talk to you guys about in the final minutes is, for example, we'd love to develop this further so we can create a much more meaningful canvas that really takes into account the different perspectives and the multi-dimensional aspect of the flourishing canvas. Right now, uh, we've literally just kept it to as it is. And again, there are, for example, we haven't put all of the questions on here. Uh, Maria and myself, we've, we've done a lot of workshops with the canvas and we've kind of felt it 
it actually is a little bit easier to not have all of the guiding questions on this particular version, but keep them aside for people to look at and to refer to separately. Igor, were there, were there any other points just before we move to the discussion? Just in yeah, terms of the... That, yeah, just some quick observation that the graphics engine behind the strategy, that this canvas does not need to be programmed or taken by a programmer. So we can use a designer tool like a Adobe Illustrator or some other design that can export the image in some in some file type. It is SVG protocol. Then we can have the we can map the the interactive areas or the blocks. Then strategy auto identify and link with the ontology that we provide to canvases. Just to put some this in in, yeah. in some synthesis, we can really design any canvas experience and brings to strategy and links to ontologies. There are no restrictions in terms of HTML or some other technology. We have a really powerful graphics engine behind. Yeah. So that's great. Finally, what I'd like to do is just finish with, we've got um, 15 or 20 minutes now. And what I'd like to do is maybe suggest that we can talk about, there's actually a you know, potential range of questions. Obviously, many of you will have your own questions already, but either now and also in the future, we'd like to open up this discussion both in this conversation, in this presentation, and also obviously offline as well. So there are obviously some things to talk about. How can we optimize the canvas for online collaboration? And hopefully by showing you the fact that there's an awful lot of analytical tools happening behind the scenes, this means that we need to think about optimization in many different ways. Um, how can we integrate and rewrite, rewrite the help and guiding questions of the Flourishing Business Canvas? How can we include further content? Anthony, I saw you uh, recently, you've published many different videos that are absolutely fantastic. How can we create a fantastic Canvas experience, integrating those to help guide people through the Canvas? Translations, um, I know there's a lot of work looking at that already. How can we integrate the canvas and its ontology with organizational ontologies? And hopefully Igor has shown you the fact that there are many different ways about thinking of organizational and computational ontologies. How do you integrate the canvas into wider strategic and design initiatives? And we've shown a little bit about how Holonomics is doing that, integrating the canvas into our, our own, for example, strategic, um, agile strategy uh, programs and services. And then also, what does it really mean? I know, Anthony, you've been talking about, say, a flourishing canvas book for a long time, but how could you link the book and create a package of the book plus a working example of the canvas in strategy? Because again, what we're looking at in our ecosystem is how can we redefine publishing? How can we really turn content into active content that really shows people how to use that information that we're discussing inside of books? So these are just a few questions, but we'd love now just to hear from you. Um, are there any of your own comments? And how could we potentially work together? Because as I said, within our ecosystem, we've got a huge pool of very talented people. We have ontology specialists, we have designers, we have artists, and we have an incredible pool of programmers, developers uh, from, for example, Vina Web, who are absolutely fantastic at putting all of this into practice and really helping not only, for example, you guys, but helping your clients really create amazing new, on, amazing new online collaboration experiences. Simon, there's one question in the chat. It says, thanks, this looks okay. really interesting. Could you explain again how the graphs are generated and what they're, what's their nature? The graph is generated by processing each word in each post-it and then association, associating the word with the sentence and everything else. The sentence with the block, the block with the canvas. And the processing of, it, of the sentence and the words are not only in terms of the structural representation, but we also can have sentiment analysis, entity tagging, like when we are talking about some personality. 
So we process in many layers the sticker to generate the graph. So when you are using strategy in the behind, we are processing each sticker on many layers of natural language and then association then on a net on a text network. Hopefully that helps them answer the question. But please ask if there's any need for clarification. No, it's because so I'm not I'm not an expert about the algorithm and so on, but I'm a I'm a researcher and I had some classes about uh, hierarchical clustering and things like that. So I was wondering how exactly it's you build the network. Is it a semantic proximity or uh, yeah? I was wondering how how you build the, the links and what what does this link means actually? Yeah. Just, just to, to clarify a little bit more, there are the structural processing of the sentence, but we also have the similarity layer that is another layer on the graph. We, we master the multidimensional modeling of graphs, so you have many layers of the text network. There's a couple more comments, so uh, thank you, Lloyd, for directing me to the chat. There's one from Andrew. Is the idea as consultants we can create unique content to use to enhance our client engagements? Absolutely, within, um, within strategy, we're making a lot of content available already. So for example, uh, with the Three Horizons, that is made available via a Creative Commons license. And so uh, there's already a lot of content available there, but absolutely, it's not just about, for example, adding a canvas. What we're really trying to show is like through the journey, there's a huge amount of there's a huge amount of creativity that you can bring to strategy to create um, your online engagements. So for example, it's not just about, for example, facilitating a workshop. What does it mean to run an online event such as a hackathon? And how would you organize that with different, part, you know, different parts of strategy? You can allocate teams to different uh, workspaces and really create very, very engaging um, interactions with your clients through the use of strategy features and also your own content. And again, a lot of authors, they already do have original content in books, but how can you really bring that alive for people? Andrew, I don't know if you would like to um, comment a little bit further, you know, we'd be very happy to hear your comments yeah no that was um you, you totally answered the question but um i'm my mind's going about a million miles right now of ways that i could use this basically to promote my business and i think we can all use this to really um make inroads um into our clients and have a an amazing uh customer experience that you know a customer journey to use that uh, to use that word right yeah, and, and exactly. And what we've tried to do is we haven't shown you what you could potentially do in the future. We're showing you things that you can do now. And also, especially with the analytical side of things, because what we're finding is that, for example, clients, you'll run a workshop and they kind of want the, they want the analysis almost in, instantly. And we can do this with strategy. You know, we can really, really become much more agile because it really reduces the um, amount of time you need um, doing the, the heavy work and you can create much more intelligent insights and shift into the next uh, stage of the augmented agility process. Um, I, I, you know, I, I can't talk about too many projects, but Holonomics is working together with First T and Vinyl Web in this manner on um, projects with, with clients. And again, it's all um, online. Um, companies in Brazil have shifted to online collaboration. We, we have to do this in Brazil. There's, there's no other option right now. And it's not about just, oh, we're going to use an online tool. When you take, bring into account artistic consciousness and you take into account the artistic uh, visual experience, you can do many, many things with this. Um, Peter's got a, a few comments as well. Uh, let me just... Do you facilitate collaboration across multiple organizations on one project? Absolutely, yes. Um, this is what I try to show. We're already, we already have a cross-organizational space with our ecosystem, because our e ecosystem consists of both um, members 
terms of the ecosystem, in terms of company, and also um, external partners, contributors as well. Do you have multiple business canvases or ontologies? Yes, absolutely. We have um, multiple canvases and we work with them and we combine them in different ways to help uh, people. I tried to show an example of that, the Holonomics Agile strategy. We've brought together our expertise in um, customer experience design, strategy design, and execution of strategy into an agile journey. So that's an example of that. And with the ontologies, I think um, I'd recommend you go back and look, you know, review the slides afterwards. The slides will be available. I think Eagle did an excellent job really trying to show, well, what do we mean by ontology? Because we can think about ontologies in many different ways. And final one, do you have separate boards or do you have a way to integrate and resolve multiple contributions? Absolutely, this is exactly why we need knowledge graph technologies to really make sense of the contributions of many, many, many contributors to, um, I sorry, the fact that there will be many people contributing to a canvas or a larger journey. And Simon, if uh, yeah. if I can make an observation, Please. so far in, in uh, technology development, we we really put an effort on the compu computa computational aspect of the ontology and the text processing. We really have access to all of the cloud technologies and the most recent algorithms of text processing, including GPT-3. Who anyone who will be interested in GPT-3 is the more advanced text processing algorithm algorithm so far, but on, on to organizational ontologies and sociological ontologies and philosophical ontologies, we, we really want to make partnerships and we have Joyce we, we is here to us that has a PhD here in Brazil in ontology engineering, but we are really interested in how can philosophical ontologies and organizational ontologies are linked to computational ontologies and text processing machine learning algorithms. So this is our, our actual stage of development. And we are also part also partner in, here in Brazil with the healthcare, with Ciro Libanês in understanding the medical ontology of COVID and how can we provide a deep analytics of patients' records. So our, our current stage of technology advance is that we really want to partner with organizations that understand ontologies and can evolve the ontologies with us. Yeah. Um, and I, thanks, Igor. And Andrew has a question. Will the Flotion Business Canvas be available to all? At this moment in time, uh, the, this, uh, Anthony, you may want to comment here. At this moment in time, the Canvas is not a Creative Commons license. So as I mentioned, we're not making it available, but there is a feature in Strategy whereby if you sign up to Strategy and create an organization, we could give just you access to the canvas. However, this would be um, something that Anthony would need to agree to. It's, it's not for Holonomics to make the canvas available at this moment in time. And this is why we wanted to have this as a discussion point because it, quite soon, I believe that there is a plan to maybe open up the canvas, publish it under Creative Commons. But at this moment in time, it, it's not available right now. It's, Although mean, it's, potentially it could be to individuals in this right. group. It, yeah. It's, it's, uh, um, oh, I just lost my train of thought. Um, it's, it's still in development. So we don't want yeah. it getting out there into the wild until we've got it, uh, nailed down a little bit further and obviously the experiences that Simon's reporting on today will be part of the input into that uh, process. Um, the startup team, as many of you know, uh, was recruited uh, and started work just about a month ago now uh, and I know Simon they've been trying to get in touch with you uh, and um, to, to start the process of figuring out what the business model looks like and obviously part of that is uh, what things are we going to license under Creative Commons, what things are going to be uh, commercially licensed, et cetera, et cetera. So um, lots of things to talk about there. And Simon, I, I suggest that uh, having the conversation with the startup team would be a good next step. And uh, possibly I'll join in on that conversation or we can have a separate conversation uh, on, on this. This is all very, very interesting. So thank you for sharing this today. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I need to apologize. Um, we <laughs> 
a few days ago we had a client who said, well, this project, it was meant to be two months, but could you possibly deliver it in one month? So um, apologies for not getting back, but absolutely, um, we'll definitely look at booking a time available and having a conversation. With, you know, I'll, I'll speak to this startup team, absolutely. Thanks for reminding me, Anthony. Oh, and one final question. Um, when the Flourishing Business Canvas is out, could we use the platform to collect data generated by users and build business model patterns from the various ontologies? Yes, at this moment in time, um, as we said, it's, um, strategy is in very close to its final version for launch. What you don't yet have access to is the um, knowledge graph and these aspects. These are going to be added on at a future date. So at this moment in time, this particular part of what we've demonstrated is only privately available. We show, what we've been showing is how we're working with our clients using some very advanced deep tech, tech, deep tech technologies, but absolutely very soon, um, strategy, you'll see strategy expand and you'll have access to many more um, informational tools. Igor, I don't know if you want to comment. Yeah, in the perspective of the organization, the organization has all the access of the data itself produced, but we also need to evolve in the discussion about the, the, the sharing for research of the data to, to other institutions. So the the first stage, the data will be tied to the organization and we really need to understand how can we anonymize that data, how can we can take data private and to perhaps make some summary or some research perspective. So uh, at so near terms, at a short term, we won't think to, to make available data between organizations on the platform. The idea is to have a, a really privacy by design so the organizations analyze the data only that they have produced. And again, the, the invitation is if anyone is interested, obviously we do have our ecosystem. So please do get in touch if you have particular projects because we can actually do some of this um, work together if, if there's a particular client demand. You know, this is the opportunity right now, integrating like your particular projects from the ecosystem perspective. And this is why we, we kind of em emphasize the fact that now um, business consultancy, it's very much done from a multidisciplinary ecosystem perspective. It's becoming much more difficult to, for you know a single consultancy or a single expert to complete to, to provide a complete solution that clients are looking for and just, I think we're just about to close this one final question from Andrew um, any planning for integration to business systems accounting CRM HR that's very much on the roadmap um, strategy will be opening up in the future Igor I don't know if you that's more of a yeah, medium in the future, I, I think in the in the medium term, we will have some integrations yeah. with the strategy. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. I believe we've managed to finish just on time. And also, I just want to really recognize the fact that strategy has been made, has been developed by quite a small team of incredibly talented, incredibly passionate individuals inside of First Tee and First Tee have reached this point by creating strategy um, on its own. It is not a startup that has received um, any kind of investment. This, this is the level of which um, First Tee is operating and it just, I really just wanted to recognize just what a range of talent that, uh, of what a range of talented people that, you know, First Tee an ecosystem has working on this level of technology, both the user design, the platform, and you know the analytical layers as well. There's many different people that have come together to uh, get strategy to this to this point. You know, it's been incredible watching the progress over the project of the project over the last couple of years. Thank you very much for the presentation. I was blown mm -hmm. away. I really enjoy seeing how different people are working on different things in the way that this has the potential to start connecting the different 
individuals and organizations like if we can start linking our work together i think this is mm -hmm. going to be an amazing just an amazing wealth of information so for those that are interested in looking up uh, this information later uh, it will be posted in the next couple of days uh, on the google drive which is ssbmg.com and the wiki and also our youtube channel the video will be up there uh, and i just before we go i just want to remind you that the next meeting is may 11th and that is going to be on from uh, linear, uh, linear to circular to regenerative business models i'm really looking forward to that one by Desiree dressner um, any final questions or comments from anybody on the group? Uh, be happy to hear you uh, as people start uh, heading out. <laughs>